Hello there. Hey, good morning. How are you? How are you? Good. good. How's everything? Good. Excellent. How about you guys? How's the, how's it all looking? Are you harvesting yet? Yeah, we've got a uh, Sauvignon Blanc in, Chardonnay coming in for uh, Maya Thomas, one of my clients. We're probably 60% done with the Chardonnay. It's looking great and flavors are good. You know, yields are down because it's been so dry, but I mean, the flavors are super nice and there'll be just less of everything. And uh, I'm pretty optimistic about everything. Reds are probably not too far off. Got some Merlot and Malbec out there that's tasting good. I went out in a vineyard this morning, just kind of, you know, I'm at that moment where I, I don't want to trick myself <laughs> picking too early, but at the same time, it's, it's tasting good. So. And, so, and yeah. so that's, that's really great because, uh, you know, all the news about uh, the droughts and um, that's just fantastic. It's sort of amazing. How, how did it happen? Well, I, you know, 2015 wasn't that long ago. And if I don't know if you remember the 2015, we had a really bad drought. I mean, it wasn't quite so dramatic, but the mm -hmm. yields were really low. The vines looked, I mean, I remember in in. February of 2015, walking out in some vineyards and thinking like, what the hell are we going to do? Not even the cover crops were coming up, you know, but yields were really small. Those wines are, they're nice. I mean, they're kind of tight and solid, but you know, age for a really long time and very aromatic. Yeah. So, I, I really like 15. In fact, it was sort of counterintuitive how fresh they turned out. Agreed. Yeah. And yeah. so not a lot of it, but some really nice wines. And we, we harvested very early in 2015 and that's what I, I've got everybody like ready to go because, you know, we'll be picking, I would bet you we'll pick some reds. If not before the end of August, then definitely the first few days of September. And then it's just going to start, start rolling in. Um, let's talk first about um, Leviathan because I, um, I really like that. And you and you're always cons making a very consistent, um, balanced wine. And I yeah, I like the the fruit in the wine. It shows it's sort of fruit forward with really really pure bright fruit, but then um, it's at the same time remains really agile and fresh. How do you do that? No, I'm glad you say that. I mean, th yeah. it's been super fun because you know this really started as our second wine to the Favia wines. You know, we used. Uh -huh. The same vineyard sources that we had and and we decided early on that we weren't going to worry about the appellation necessarily or you know whether it's a varietal wine or a napa valley wine because we had a lot of things to work with in the cellar i mean it was small scale at the beginning but i just wanted a wine that you know you could go out to a steakhouse and if i saw it on the menu i would want it because exactly. I, make it, I make it like this is the wine that i like to drink it's yeah. rich, it's flavorful, but it's very fresh. And it's got like the, the structure of a Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon and sort of that character, but it's made from different varieties. You know, it's Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Syrah, now even a little Petite Syrah that we're getting. And, you know, it, 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 it never was just Napa Valley and we still do yeah. get some Napa Valley fruit, but we're, it's fun. I've been... I've been describing it as like a wine safari. You know, we're lucky. We're yeah. looking for new vineyards, new new growers, just anywhere that, like, I, I've spent so long, like, zooming in on different terroir within the Napa Valley. And I know, like, what does well for each variety. But when you, like, when you zoom out and look, think of the entire, like, state of California as our appellation rather than, like, individual appellations, you start to see these like high elevation vineyards for cab or, you know, great like cooler sites with clay loam soils for the Merlot or, you know, and, and Lake County, Sonoma County, Napa County, Sierra Foothills, like we're finding all these people to work with and it's just really fun to, and we create all these pieces and then we put it all back together and it just takes on a life of its own and we can deliver it at a, at a great price. And, and well, how much does it sell for? It's $39. Really? Yeah. Retail. 
It's yeah, really it's great, great because you know there is the, there is some Napa Valley fruit in there, but it's also just great sites where if you blindfolded somebody and drove them to this vineyard and walked it, they would think, oh my god, this is like a world class vineyard site, and yet there there doesn't necessarily have a brand name to it or anything like that, but it just checks all the boxes. And, well, you must uh, be you must be telling them of uh, like when to pick. You're you're picking earlier because it, it has such nice freshness and brightness and it's every year even in a let's say in a um hotter you know in a hotter year like 19 was well 19 was hot but not super hot but um it always has this you know freshness underlying freshness to it which is like you you know really important as far as drinkability so are you really just you know um how do you say controlling a bit some um, when they're yeah i mean we're, the whole we're thing? We're working with growers, but we're you know we have long term relationships with these growers. So um, I I t well I tasted everything and uh, the carbone. Uh, by the way, why is it called carbone? I mean that means um, you know um, uh, what is it ash? You know um, in Italian, is it because of the soil? Well, no, it's from a, the family that originally built our winery. Oh, that's, that's now right. The yeah. Winery. yeah, Antonio yeah, Carboni. Yeah, it's actually pronounced Carboni in Italy. Yeah, Carboni. It was, it was uh, spelled yeah. with an I, but with yeah, probably at Ellis Island they changed the spelling on them to with an E. But um, yeah, it's Carboni. So the Chardonnay is—is is that the Chardonnay? That's yeah, from, really good. Uh, yeah, the vineyard right right outside the door here. Old vines from the '80s, so 35 year old vines. Mm. Not really dry farmed, but almost dry farmed. You know, barely even need to be irrigated. The, the grapes don't get too ripe, which is really nice. You know, they, they just get up to like 22 and a half bricks, lots of acidity. And, so is, um, it, is it Wente? Um, it's not Wente clone. It's clone four, which is another really nice Chardonnay clone. Okay. Um, but lots of malic acid. We don't do any malic yeah. fermentation. Oh, uh, okay. That's why I like so it. So it's, it's barrel fermented and it's on the lees for about eight months. But we don't, it's only about 15% new oak. And um, and then we we just filter it and bottle it. So no ML, just really fresh. And for us, I mean, that again, that's just the wines we like to drink. So yeah, totally. <clears throat> I get it. But by the way, what's some, um, uh, tell me your thoughts about 18. I guess we talked about it a little bit when I last saw you, but now that the wines are in bottle, like, what's your feeling about um, 18 overall? And I guess comparison to 19. So both really nice vintages, but the 18s, it's funny. We just like two weeks ago with our team here brought out all four of the Favia Red 18s and tasted them together and sort of <clears throat> worked on some tasting notes and for the release. And I have to say, they're just, they're, they're just so dynamic, I guess is a word you would use. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, we always talk about the wines and how each wine is different from one another and what's special about the different appellations. And I swear you could like talk about the wines to someone and then give them all four of the wines blind and they would sort them because they just taste exactly like each of the vineyards like delivers every year, but mm -hmm. with sort of the intensity and the, it's like high resolution, you know what I mean? They're very, they're nice. very generous, but they're also just like high energy, you know, like, um, the, both of the Cabernet Franc blends are just very aromatic and floral and, you know, lots of, you know, savory tones, mouthwatering tones. Um, and yet they still show the, the great differences between Oakville and the Coombsville part of, of the Valley. The Cerro Sur is not from Coombsville. It's higher up into the mountains, but it's the same latitude. So, but in general, I mean, 18s, and I'm sure you're tasting a lot of them. They're just very yeah. generous, very, you know, structured. But I think, and and we're not we're not trying to make really like big, rich, you know, style wines. We want to make more site driven wines. So yes, I feel like there's so much energy in our 18s, and like the aromatics just speak to the to the sites, which I really love. Your Cabernet from Coombsville was really fantastic, and uh, and it really highlighted eighteen in general. Where the wines, 
have this beautiful in- integration of tannins and um, great length. And uh, they're really, you know, you could almost drink them now, but they'll age um, really well. That was the whole thing about 18 in general for me was just that incredible balance to the wines. Maybe 16 has more, <clears throat> it has more structure and intensity, but I keep on, you know, the 18s just are so gorgeous. So, you know, that's, if that could be the, <clears throat> the model for Napa, that would just be, you know, a new benchmark, I think. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I like the comparison to 16 because 16 is so powerful and, mm. and rich. And so 18, I think, is it's got the density, but it's got more more energy. You know, like there's just yeah. there's higher notes. There's more sort of uh, treble clef, you know, like more uh, more detail. That's what I said the other day when we were tasting as a team. Like yeah. I find a lot of detail on the lines, you know, like you can get into the the real nuances that I, I, I think that's great because they still have the, the power of Napa Valley that I love, but with a lot of just fine green detail. And what were the, al- the alcohols were slightly lower in general in 18. A little right? lower than, than 16 and 17. Yeah. And how, how did you, how are you finding your 19s now when you taste them and thinking about the vintage? So 19, I, I would say it's, it's a similar character to 18. It's not maybe as as broad shoulder and dense, but it's very, uh, they're very dark. They're very aromatic. They're very balanced. I, I love the wines. And I, the great thing about 19 is that every time I taste them, I like them more and more. And so, you know, everything got bottled in the last couple months. And so the last, the last tastings, like the last like finalizing of the, of the blends and stuff, I just seem to like them more and more, which I think is a good, that's another good sign, you know, when there's a, there's a little bit more uh, like riper fruit character in the 19s, right? A little bit like just a tiny bit more fruity. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe a little more like red fruited as opposed to the yeah. black fruit. Yeah. 18's got more black character. 19's a little more red toned, but still, still you know dense and and really nice so and what and uh when you're when you're you know you're drinking with friends or with customers the 18s what what do they like what what's the sort of a response from people you know what's funny we just literally in the past couple of days started opening the wines for people and people are pretty excited about them which is which is great yeah, I mean, because we literally just, these wines just got pulled out of the cellar to start showing to people. So um, it's been a great reaction so far. Because yeah. I was wondering some, you know, uh, but maybe it's less that ca- less the case now. But for people that used to drink, let's say the old school Napa wines and not just your wines, but 18 in general and so many wines from Napa now that, you know, you taste them and they're they're not these big blockbuster things anymore. And so I, it's interesting when I talk to winemakers, I quite often ask them that. And like hardly anyone's ever said, oh, yeah, they really, you know, they miss that big st- style. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, there's uh, I think there's definitely a movement back towards more balance, which we can still do power and balance. Right. I mean, you taste yeah. wines across the decades from Napa. They always have plenty of power and concentration. Um, but when you get the freshness and the, you know, the more detailed aromatics, I think that that's, it's definitely something a lot of people are moving back to, which I think is great. And how about Coombsville? Like um, I'm a huge fan and uh, is it really, are more and more people recognizing it for the unique place it is? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's funny because, you know, We've been out here for 15 years. So 2005 was our first vintage making Coombsville wines, but it didn't have an appellation then, right? So we we blended that. So we have the Coombsville cab and the Oakville cab. Those two used to get blended together, and that was our Napa Valley Cabernet. Oh, okay. And so it wasn't until 2013 when I was like, hey, we should we should highlight these two areas. Let's do two different wines. 
And um, it's really cool to show them side by side, right? Because for totally, me, they're so different. They're so I different. can see them. I, I can see them together. That it would actually it might fight against one another. It's not. It wouldn't be. You know, one plus one equals three. It's you know maybe one plus one is one and a half because they're very distinctly different in a really good way. So it's cool yeah. you did that. Well, but I will have to open our 2012 when yeah. you're in town. Because it's actually awesome. really nice. But um, I'm sure. But um, the anyway, like I would say, like Coombsville and Oakville, you wouldn't say, oh, the Oakville is up here and the Coombsville is yeah, down no, here. not like, at all. I think that they're they're right there. They're just so different. And so there's a lot of these little vineyards that used to get blended into people's Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon bottlings because there wasn't an appellation, right? I mean, there's and it was Ferrella, cheaper than fruits. Yeah, Ferrella is a great example where that was a vineyard that a lot of people knew and they wanted the fruit from and, and it would just find its way into these great bottles. And now it's, now it's a Coombsville wine and, you know, we're getting wine, we're getting grapes from Meteor Vineyard, which has always been great. And, and even some grapes from Paul Hobbs now next door, you know, he's our next door neighbor. Yeah. We're getting to the Nathan Coombs estate fruit, which is really fun. And a couple other, Vineyards. But yeah, now that people are bottling the wines with Coombsville on the label, there's a lot of interest. And that's pretty exciting for us because we're obviously pretty <coughs> solidly set up here. So is are you where are you uh, where are you sourcing your grapes for um Oakville? Is it near Ulysses? Uh it's all from Oakville Ranch. So do you know okay. Oakville Ranch? up at the top? Oh yeah, of, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So up above yeah. Dalla Valle, way up there on the top. So it's oh, really okay, awesome. Side, okay. On the east side. So yeah. um, those red soils, our blocks are like between 800 and 1,000 foot elevation. So if you're up at That's Ovid, you know, if you're up at Ovid and you look yeah, off sure. the front porch there, there's a vineyard right in the foreground. That's Oakville Ranch. So that's the very end of the road that goes up above Dalla Valley and Peter Michael there. So that's that we've was been with them since 2008 or nine. And Great sites. Phil Katuri farms it. It's all organic. And um, oh, okay. yeah, great site. That was actually <clears throat> my favorite wine today. The Oakville? Yeah. It has su it's such incredible character. Although the, <clears throat> the Coombsville is really um, so different, much more like blue fruits and lavender and, you know, um, very different in character, which, you know, I like the, those are clearly. Um, those are the two favorite wines for me, and, but it's very different in character. I mean, there's a reason Oakville has become so famous, right? I mean, yeah, wines just have such a strong character and that black fruit and just that cassis and the big tannins. And is, is your, is Coombsville also, um, organic? So we have four different vineyards in Coombsville that we work okay. with. Um, two of them are certified organic. The others are a very sustainable, but they're not, you know, considered organic. But Annie, my wife is very, uh, yeah, I she's know. adamant about moving people in that direction as, as quickly as possible and whatever it takes. The Chardonnay is, is organic. Oh, okay. is nice. no, I just, cause I just want to put in and see I'm made from organic grapes. Okay. Yeah, the Chardonnay is organic. Um, the Oakville wines are organic. The Coombsville is, you know, sustainable slash organic. All right. Well, listen, um, thanks for the interview. It's good to catch up. I look forward when we can catch back in, um, you know, in person and have a have dinner or have a, you know, I think last time we made some like Korean Mexican food or something, but that would yeah, be cool. Sure. <laughs> or hey, we can um, get out here. Excellent. Appreciate it. All right. Here it okay, is. Okay, buddy. Have, yeah, have a good evening. All right. Have a great just, day. Yeah, I'm just starting. So it was a good, good start. Perfect. Okay, All right. buddy. Have a good one. All See the you. best. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. Good luck with the harvest. Yep. Thank you.